Hi guys, this is Artful Kisses, and today I'm going to talk about a couple things while I draw this puppy. This is a, this is a chow puppy, um, and as you can see, he's very blue. <laughs> so what I'm going to talk about today, or one of the things, is about um, using references a little bit. I already know I already talked about that. This isn't really about method of using references. Um, just a little bit about how I did this picture using references and uh, realistic versus abstract a tiny little bit not in which one's better um, because neither style is really my thing but if you mix them together they can be kind of cool and so um, for these pictures I did a whole series of puppies this is my ninth one I believe and so I've got one more to do after this I'll have my whole set 10 uh, colorful puppies is the name of my thing um, and I used some photo references that I just kinda got off of Google but um, what I did to combat the fact that these were photo references is I made them a little abstract so they don't look just like the photos, any of them. The photos were more of just, you know, an idea of a pose um, rather than the puppy themselves. So I've got puppies with uh, the patterned puppies. The patterns are a bit different than the photos. And obviously <laughs> this dog is blue. The photo I found of a chow was not, it was not a blue dog. But um, that was why I started doing the different colors was to kind of combat the fact that it's off of a photo. I didn't want it to be able to be recognized as a photo and I mean like I will admit I didn't draw it off the top of my head because I'm not there yet but maybe eventually I'll be able to do that but I wanted them to look like recognizable dogs so I used references which is acceptable there's nothing wrong with using references it's actually really good to use references sometimes as long as you're not abusing your reference and so if your picture comes out looking just like a photo I mean that's a skill in itself but I feel like that's an abusive reference. You should use it to somehow make something original. So, um, what I did here is I didn't look at my reference all the time. And I know in a different video I told you that whenever I use references, I do not look at the reference the whole time. I usually put it in a place where I can't see it and my paper at the same time because that forces me to kind of come up with something a little bit different based on just the idea of it or to just get a specific detail correct, like. Um, the shape of the nose or something but um, sorry for my sore throat I've got allergies um, but for this dog um, I chose blue I only have one dog left to do after this and I think I might make it green I'm not sure but I've been using just weird colors I do have an orange one that's the only color I did that I don't like for the most part a lot of them are blues and pinks and purples because <laughs> those are my favorite colors so there's just kind of a theme going there um, but yeah this is more of a realistic it's not my regular cartooning style when I do marker I don't usually do my regular cartooning style um, I do have a style uh, an illustration style for dogs but this is not it this is more way more realistic my illustration styles are my simplest ones and they're made up for more like if I had to do a bunch of pictures in a row like either a comic or illustrating a book or something then it makes sense to have them more simple and they're cute um, so yeah also there's it's okay for an artist to have multiple styles as a matter of fact it's preferred so I guess I'll talk about that a little bit that it's um, an artist really should have more than one style. I have my my default style, you can't see the air quotes I just made, which is my main one if I'm gonna draw a like a, a real picture, no there are more air quotes there, um, I'm gonna draw in my default style which is um, it's a hodgepodge of all my favorite styles throughout all time that I've ever seen so there's some Disney influence there's a tiny bit of anime influence because that's where I started out and there's uh, just various other things I would 
often practice other styles, which I will do a different video about why that's important and how to do that. Um, but I would practice different styles, and if I found a feature I liked, like a way of doing noses or something, then I transfer that over to my default style and continue to do it that way. And it's always developing more, and I really like where it's at right now, but it'll probably continue to change as I get better at what I do. And um, so that's, that's my default style, and it's a little too realistic to do a bunch of pictures in a row. I mean, I can do it, but it takes a long time, and I'll, I will get tired, <laughs> and a project will take me a lot longer. So I have a different style that I do comics or illustrations in, which is a lot simpler and is more like, a, um, I would say, like the newspaper funnies. It's like some mix between my default style and then what it would be if it was a comic strip. <laughs> which I do comic strips in it, so that makes sense. And then um, that's the style that I do puppies in normally, my really cartoony puppies. And then this is my semi-realistic style, where you can see cartoon elements in it. The dog's eyes are inspired by the shape of a real chow's eyes. Look a little sad just because it's got you know fur covering them up. <laughs> if you ever look at a picture of a chow, it's actually kind of entertaining that it does that. It's... <laughs> It's interesting, but, um, so there's that, and the way I do shininess on it, probably, and I try to make them look fluffy and furry, like a real dog, but the coloring, <laughs> I just basically do whatever I want for coloring. I try to follow the patterns of if a dog is has light spots or white spots, and, or if, and if they got, like, a dark area, like, I, I, I kind of try to follow along with um, the natural patterns they have, but definitely not the colors in this series. I've been doing crazy colors, which is a lot more fun, I think. I love bright colors. I'm not really into natural colors. So if you look at my uh, characters that I draw a lot, um, that I oddly enough don't have very many videos of, <laughs> they most of them have bright hair colors, a lot of unnatural hair colors. I've got some blondes and black and very few people with brown hair it's kind of like their their rarity that's cool but anyway um <laughs> i like doing things backwards but a lot of them they usually have bright colored hair bright colored eyes that are totally not natural colors and um that, but that's just me so like if your thing is natural colors find things that are normally bright and do them in natural colors and see what happens, see how it turns out and the difference. But I challenge everyone who watches this and plenty of people who don't in class, kids hear me say stuff like this all the time, but I am going to challenge you to the next time you decide to color something, color it with some different colors than what you would expect. If, if it's in a coloring book, if you're doing a doodle or a drawing, just to see what happens, see where see where you can go with it, because it's it's interesting just the different things, or how different something can look just by changing the colors, and how even though you've got a dog that is purple or blue or green, it can you know it still looks like a real dog, even though it's crazy colors. Sometimes if you your brain doesn't notice stuff like that, it's interesting, but um, but also it can just a tiny little detail on a realistic picture can make it look totally abstract also so it's fun to or it's a fun challenge to see if you can do abstract and realistic at the same time I really only do this with dogs I haven't done a realistic human in a while I should probably uh, do one just for practice but yeah um, yeah <laughs> I'm not sure what else to talk about on this video. I know it's kind of rambly, but I looked at my list of topics that I wanted to do, and none of them seem to really fit this realistic dog. Um, so, we'll, so I'll get to those in later videos. I have another dog to do, and maybe I'll do a video of it. But um, I've been, do, it's it's been crazy lately. <laughs> um, so, sorry this got really rambly, but yeah, next time hopefully I'll get to some better topics, and also I'm taking requests for topics. I know there have been a couple that, have, that I have not done yet, but that's because they didn't fit for this video, and I'm 
sorry for taking so long to get a video out, but hopefully I'll get back to doing these. I found a microphone, so hopefully my audio is not as crummy and it will be a lot easier for me to edit. It'll be a lot faster for me to edit now that I have a microphone because I was recording audio on my phone before. So um, go ahead and send me some requests on uh, topics and even pictures if you want. I plan to do a one of my topics will be about fan art so if you want to send me some fan art requests that would also be fine and I'll get to it so thanks for watching here's the uh, finished dog right there and <laughs> um, have a nice day <laughs>